In life, there are three guarantees. Death, taxes, and Call of Duty robbing me blind every year. And as much as I want to be done with Call of Duty, don't there we go. Um, what's life without some train wrecks, am I right, fellas? On December 22nd of 2022, I made a video on the MW2 2022's campaign. And if you haven't seen it, watch it later. Don't ruin my watch time. But straight to the point, this is a video about Modern Warfare's I, I, I's campaign. But that's annoying to say, so we're gonna call it Triple I from here on out. Sounds like a spell. <laughs> Shadow Wizard Money Gang. If MWII is a game with no guts, then MW Triple I is a game with no heart. This game's campaign is an embarrassment and somehow managed to make II feel like a joyride in comparison to the shallow nothing of an experience. Call of Duty is boring. It's so boring that I didn't even want to play it for this piece of footage in a Call of Duty video. Does that make sense? No. Does life make sense? No. But life could be boring, and that's why we tend to spice it up with addictions and bad habits like spending money we don't have, or eating food that's not good for us. And something else that could be boring is your default browser. Um, I like Google Chrome and Microsoft Edge because I like lag and boredom and math of vanilla ice cream. Shut up, young Sheldon. Not all of us like plaid and being boring. So instead of using the normal browsers you find on the computer in the dentist office, it's time to swap browsers. And lucky for everyone, this video is sponsored by Opera GX. Opera GX, a website known for great customization and a out-of-pocket Twitter account. Opera GX has recently introduced a feature that lets you customize your browser even more than you could before. With GX mods, you could add personality to your browser that you would never see in any of the other boring ones. Like, look at this MW3 background. The, the good one. And with this background, you could enable funny features. Like when I type, it spams hit markers. Like a montage parody from 2011. There's also more sounds and features you can enable in the mod menu. Like when you open a tab, or close a tab, or brush over icons. In the GX store, you could install a wide range of mods for games you might enjoy, like CSGO, or even even Black Ops 2. And when I was downloading yeah. millions of sound effects yeah. for these videos while Shut editing, my old browsers would start to slow down my computer, ruining my gaming sessions. But in Opera GX, you're able to lower RAM and CPU usage. So I could play Elden Ring and die a hundred times while having 10 tabs of young Sheldon open at the same time. And when typing these scripts for these videos, my eyes are usually burning from staring at pure white for hours at a time. And I'm not talking about young Sheldon. On Opera GX, they now have a feature where you can force dark pages, where now my eyes could rest easy on a white on black surface. Opera GX is compatible with every extension. And you're able to transfer all history, cookies, and bookmarks from other browsers. So click the link in the description below to download Opera GX. Now back to the video. First off, it's been over a year since the last Call of Duty video, which is strange. Modern Warfare came out in 2019 and Double I came out in 2022. Double I had a normal Call of Duty development cycle of around two years. And the plan for Double I was that it was going to be the first Call of Duty to break the cycle of yearly releases and have support for two years until Treyarch's next title, giving them three full years of development since Black Ops Cold War's release. This would also help Sledgehammer, giving them more time on their next title as well. Overall, it helps Call of Duty, since the game's developers wouldn't be getting whipped as much now. Well, none of that went to plan. Everyone hated Sledgehammer's game and ripped it apart, that being Call of Duty Vanguard, the immersive World War II shooter with King Kong and Godzilla. Then Double I came out where it became the largest Call of Duty release ever, making a billion dollars in just 10 days. And for a good two months, everyone enjoyed it until they realized the campaign wasn't that good, Warzone was boring and not the same as our beloved Verdansk, DMZ was shallow with reused Warzone POIs, Spec Ops was a joke, the progression system was terrible with barely any good maps to play, and the multiplayer was weak since the mechanics were limited for the sake of realism. The same game that added Nicki Minaj, Snoop Dogg, and Homelander, by the way. And let's not forget Kevin Durant on that trash ass team with <laughs> Luca. Donchett's favorite son. So instead of Infinity Ward fixing the game by adding old maps alongside new maps with his promised life service at frequent pace, while also tweaking the gameplay and the progression system to save the game, uh, they instead just ported Shipman and Shoot House, the same two maps that everyone has ever played since 2019 to grind camos and weapon levels, and they gave up on the life service, they also gave up on Warzone, and this made Activision shoot a flare for Sledgehammer to slam the brakes on whatever they were making, and began whipping them to make an MW2 expansion in less than a year to be sold as the next holiday title for seven and with a mainline Call of Duty title comes a mainline campaign. Triple I's campaign is the shortest to ever come out, but that's not the problem. Sorry, Kratos. COD campaigns are usually short. I talked about this before in my Black Ops 2 video that got demonetized. A Call of Duty campaign isn't going to be an amazing narrative that cures Parkinson's. This isn't God of War Ragnarok or Re Red Dead 2 even. COD games are cheesy action-packed blockbusters that are meant to be dramatic with spectacle. Yeah, uh, Triple I is not that. It's the worst Call of Duty campaign I ever played, and in all honesty, you flat out should not play it. There are multiple times where I considered closing the game and watching a YouTube Let's Play instead, and I promise you, on Rocket's life even, that watching a Let's Play is more beneficial to your life than playing this game. And if I'm lying, may God murder 
murdered my children. Please, yeah. kill them today. Double Eye's story wasn't good, but at least I had an enjoyable time playing its bad story. Not as much as the OG, but it was at the very least enjoyable. Instead of making a fun Call of Duty action movie, Sledgehammer decided to cut corners and not even make a basic campaign, which is the first time this has ever happened in COD history. Instead of creating unique set pieces and unique missions, Sledgehammer just used Warzone assets and POIs, which for casuals who don't weigh a thousand pounds and play League of Legends or something, POI stands for Point of Interest, which are funny little locations found in big maps like Tilted Towers or Salty Springs. By the time this video comes out, OG Fortnite is done with, and most of you already got Peter Griffin. In this campaign, these POIs are used to create generic sand box objectives where you can make your own fun, which is bullshit terms for we were rushed to make a surprise COD game, so this is all we could do to meet quota, or else Activision is going to send us and our families out the airlock. These missions have no narrative progress. They are objective-based completion quests where you can loot and scavenge like DMZ or Warzone. So instead of hanging off a car or fighting to save the White House or, let's be honest, any of the stuff you could do in 2019 or Double I, you now have to do the same repetitive quest from cutscene to cutscene. It was unbearable throughout my entire three hours, and I was plagued by the worst thing you can experience in a video game, boredom. The more I think about it, it's kind of funny. In the double eye video, a complaint I had was that the open-ended maps were spammed too much, and the only creative one was the soap mission, while the others felt like filler. And instead of fixing that, now we have a whole game of that sentiment, but even more lazy. Speaking of not listening to my criticisms, the game is still narratively from one perspective. You still play as a bunch of Task Force 141 members, the only three missions where you don't are the intro, an AC-130 mission, and no Russian, which, trust me, we'll, we'll be talking about. No Marines, Rangers, Delta Force, just a bunch of whack generic Halloween costumes. Once again, it's backwards progression. At least in Double Eye, you had Alejandro and Rodolfo. In this game, you don't even get that. But the reason why you don't have different perspectives alongside cool bells and whistles mainly has to do with this game's story. So let's talk about this game's story. This new reboot Call of Duty trilogy has been extremely disconnected. It's a clusterfuck of bad writing alongside awful story decisions with no cohesive glue. When playing it, one question kept popping in my head. Why does this narrative even exist? Triple I is hindered because of its two previous games, and over the span of three AAA Call of Duty campaigns, almost no progression has happened to open or conclude this third title. Makarov is now only making his debut and has no prior reason to exist. The story of Triple I is that Vladimir Makarov wants to start a war to show Russia's power, and to do this, he wants to launch a bunch of missiles to different places to blame the fake Middle East country. Also, Shepard is still here uh, and alive with no purpose, and Graves is alive also with no purpose. I was running the money about him, by the way. Modern Warfare has a big antagonist problem. General Barkov, Hadir, Hassan, Shepard, and now Makarov have been the main bads of this trilogy. General Barkov is only a villain to Farah and has no impact and then dies. Hadir is a villain, sort of, who dies in a raid cutscene in Double Eye and has no larger impact. Hassan, who had no impact on Double Eye, dies in the end. And Shepard, who does have a small impact in regards to the game's bad twist, survives till this game. A lot of COD side content exists to tie loose ends together. The raid cutscene scenes in II did a better job at continuing 2019's plot than the main campaign did for Double I, and the battle pass and spec ops cutscene conflicts never get brought up in the main story. Most people thought Alex and Graves were still dead from their previous games before coming back to life, but in reality they can't die because if they're dead, how else are you going to sell a battle pass? <laughs> Oh wait, you could just sell them as zombies now. Also, when Double Eye came out, nobody knew that Victor Sakaev died in the Warzone cutscene in the previous game. And I bring all this up because why is it so hard to make these things have a string of progression? And why does this trilogy have so much fat and filler? Every new Modern Warfare game feels like we're starting from square one. There's terrorism in Barkov, we kill Barkov. Now there's Hassan and threats of terrorism in Uber Eats content theft. We love yeah. Lelo. We love Lelo. We kill Hassan. But now there's Makarov, terrorism, but we don't kill Makarov because that would require us to finish the game. And in between, between this stuff, there's no development or interesting events, but rather new villains and tying up old stuff that couldn't make it to this game since we blew past it before and moved on. It's even more embarrassing when you compare this new trilogy to the original that got kicked off more than 17 years ago. In COD 4, Zakaev is bad, so he kills Zakaev. Makarov likes Zakaev and is mad you killed him and wants revenge. Shepard is mad about the nuke caused by the guy who likes Zakaev that killed a bunch of his soldiers in the first game and is now mad. You find out Shepard worked with Makarov, but they also hate each other and they want each other dead, but you're a piece of evidence, so Shepard wants you dead, so you team up with Makarov. Makarov to kill Shepard for yours and his best interest, but now Makarov has caused World War 3 and got a bunch of your friends killed, so now you hunt Makarov to kill him. This is an extreme speedrun, and there's a lot of details between these actions, but with these three guys, you have a web that's all connected for three games. And since it's 
connected when things happen it causes chain reactions even to all the smaller guys who also connect to the spider web like al Assad, rojas and victor sakeev who doesn't get killed off screen like a killer bee next year. the only way villains connect in the reboot though is by on-screen mentions like barkov getting name dropped even though he was barely a character and that's it none of these guys overlap i still have no idea why the hell hassan was a second game's antagonist and why would you connect shepherd so closely to him rather than a main guy like makarov hassan leaves as quickly as he came in and didn't do shit and shepherd also didn't do shit and was a one-dimensional piece of cardboard once again i ripped it apart in this video double i sucks jesus and triple i also sucks as well its story doesn't get a conclusion and neither will this video we'll meet again when the next one comes out i'm not done and this nightmare will never end either new video soon thank you to the patrons you're the real heroes goodbye this guy hit with a city case sacks built 300 racks in a year how does that feel